Hi friends, so there is a very interesting question in my channel and the question is should you do a PhD in US or in some European country? So of course this is a very important question out there and I'm going to address this issue in several points. So let us start this particular problem. So the number one issue has to do with the duration of the PhD and as far as European countries are concerned most of them will give you the PhD in three to four years. And this is very useful because in many cases you actually want to graduate fast, you want to get on with your life, you want to get a job, you want to make more money. So of course if you are planning to finish your PhD in three years, Europe is the place to go. But as far as US universities are concerned, they can take up to five to six years in most cases to give the PhD. And in certain disciplines such as humanities, it may take even more time. Sometimes people have to write a book out there. So keep in mind that US PhD takes a much longer time in most cases. Now, the second issue has to do with whether you can do a direct PhD or not. And as far as most European universities are concerned, they do require that you have a master's degree. And so the master's degree is something which is very useful, of course, in terms of preparation and coursework, because most PhD degrees given by European universities do not have much coursework. In fact, they may have no coursework. So you are expected to have finished all your coursework in your previous university, wherever you did your bachelor's and master's degree, and you are coming to this university only to do research. One more thing is that many European research institutes give PhDs also, so that's something to keep in mind. These guys basically only do research. There is no facility in this research institute to give you courses, so that's an important distinction. Now, as far as US is concerned, there is going to be a lot of coursework out there. So very often you will find that US universities will permit you to do a direct PhD. So if you look at, for example, the Stanford Computer Science Program or the Carnegie Mellon Computer Science Program, they clearly say that you can have a bachelor's degree in computer science and you can straight away go and do a PhD. In fact, you can have a bachelor's degree in a different discipline also, as long as it is quantitative and you can do the PhD in computer science from Stanford or CMU. So direct PhD is much more possible in US universities because remember, they are making you do a plethora of coursework once you have joined the university. So they are essentially training you in the research discipline. They are not believing that your master's training is sufficient here. Now the number three point has to do with choosing your PhD topic and supervisor. Now most European institutions require that you actually choose your PhD topic, you figure out some topic and in fact you write a research proposal on this PhD topic. So very often you have to communicate with the prospective PhD supervisor. The first thing is that you have to get this person to say yes to you and then you can figure out your research proposal. Now in fact you will find that many European countries you will find that they have different research institutions, universities which give ads for PhD positions. So here the PhD is more like a job and therefore what you can do is that you can apply for the specific ad. Now in the ad they will give the description of the research problem so it's kind of easy to draft the research problem by focusing on the PhD ad out there. So this is more like a regular job. But in the US what often happens is that you simply apply to the department and the graduate school of the university and the department is of course going to try to figure out who is a right supervisor for you. Now in some cases it's of course beneficial to send mails to different professors and have some kind of feedback from them but it's not necessary to have a very detailed feedback about your PhD program. Of course you may want to have some basic concept of what you are going to do your PhD on. For example if you are in the mechanical area you may think you are going to do your PhD in fluid mechanics so that is certainly going to narrow down the number of professors who will actually want to peruse your case but it's not necessary to come up with the exact research proposal research problem at this time. Now here there is a distinction I have seen between the foreign students who apply to US and the US students because many US students actually get to meet some of the professors and then figure out what problem they are going to do but what frequently happens is that the foreign students, they are selected by the professor's concern and the professor may simply decide that he or she likes a particular student, their CV, their background and then they select this person and this person lands up and has to work on a research problem for which the proposal has been written by this professor. So this can sometimes be a good situation but sometimes it can be a bad situation also in case you 
do not want to work on that particular research problem. So I found situations where people came into the PhD program and then they were told to do some kind of work which was maybe to do with different simulations which they didn't like to do simulations or they actually were told to do certain tests and these guys didn't want to do tests. So these kind of situations can happen and in that case it can often be difficult to change your PhD supervisor because your funding is actually tied to this particular professor. So these are certain things to keep in mind in the US system. Now the fourth point has to do with teaching. And as far as many European universities are concerned, there is no particular requirement that you teach. In fact, in Europe, it is considered that the professor's main job is to teach and therefore most of the professors are teaching most of the time and the PhD students are only doing their research. But in many US universities, PhD students are actually asked to teach many large classes. These are classes where you may actually have to hold tutorials, sometimes you may have to hold a lecture. And there are cases where you may have to do work such as grading, you may have to help in the lab and so on. And very frequently the stipend you get may be tied to this work you do in terms of assistance in teaching. So this is important in US universities, sometimes you help in teaching, sometimes you help in research. Very rarely there are people who actually get fellowships which simply let them do the research. So as far as Europe is concerned, in most cases the PhD students get a stipend. They are considered like employees of the university, sometime of the state, and so that is a different type of situation. Now the fifth point has to do with coursework, and like I mentioned before, the European universities very frequently do not require you to do any coursework, but in US you have to do many courses, and you also have to give a test which is out there, also known as the qualifiers, and this test is on some of the subjects which you have taken courses on. Now one of the strengths of the US PhD is that this coursework gives you a lot of breadth and so you will find that very frequently US PhDs are able to work on different disciplines. They do not work on one discipline for all their life. But as far as European PhDs are concerned, they are frequently very narrow because they have been only working on one particular problem and so they tend to work on that problem for the rest of their life. So this is something to keep in mind. At the present moment, if you are a master's degree student, it may seem that it's a good idea not to do coursework, but sometime doing coursework at a top US university may be actually beneficial to you because these courses are taught with a lot of rigor. As far as I remember in my time, some of the courses which I took in the US university, they were taught very differently from my home institution. And there was much more emphasis on projects, whereas in the home institution, the emphasis was more on exams. So again, both these are beneficial. They help you in some way. But the project mode of US universities helps you in doing research in many situations. Now, the next issue has to do with salary. And European universities actually pay you based on some kind of stipend, which may be coming from the university. In some cases, you may get a stipend from some body such as the DAAD or some different body out there, maybe you have become a road scholar and in those cases you may be getting your money from a foundation. So that's something you need to keep in mind. In most cases you may actually be employed as a PhD as part of a research project. This is in response to a job and so you get many benefits out there. You get coverage for health, you get coverage for different problems you may have and you get a nice stipend out there. Sometimes you may get access to a good guest house also. In US there is no concept of guest house so that's something you need to remember. So again that is an issue you need to think about as far as doing the PhD is concerned. The salary in some of the European countries is much more. For example in the Nordic countries in Switzerland the salary of PhD students is pretty good and they can live a much better life. As far as US students are concerned, if they happen to live in places such as California or New York, then what's going to happen is that they are going to find things are extremely expensive, especially rental, and then they are going to have difficulty on the PhD stipend. Now, the next point has to do with the comprehensive exam. And I did mention some aspect about the qualifying exam. In fact, this is one of the most difficult part of the US PhD is giving this qualifying exam and this exam is very often very rigorous very tough and you get a pass fail grade on this so for example if you are in mechanical you may have to take the test in fluid mechanics solid mechanics heat transfer thermodynamics robotics different subjects and then the professors grade you on that and 
every now and then people fail the qualifier. So this is something which is very nerve wracking. I remember that when I was a PhD student, people used to all the time say that this is an exam you cannot afford to fail because if you fail the qualifying exam, especially as a foreign student, you can take a one way trip back to your home country. Now, this is not true in all cases. You do get a second chance to give the qualifier. But of course, if you fail for the second time, it's very difficult and in most cases impossible for the department to keep you as a student. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Now, of course, the last point I will say is about language. As far as US is concerned, you know that the language in USA is very well known to most people. And as far as Europe is concerned, you may have some difficulty in penetrating into the society unless you know the language there. So there are countries in Europe, for example, if you are in Netherlands or you're in Norway or you're in Finland, they do not actually expect you to learn the language there because the language is very difficult. It is also very narrow. And there are some countries like France and Germany where they would expect you to learn the language. They are very proud of their language. So that's something you have to keep in mind. If you go to one of the more populous countries in Europe, then you may have to learn the language there. But if you go to one of the countries which is populated to a very less extent, then the English language may be sufficient for you. So I hope this video helps you in figuring out whether you want to do a PhD in Europe or in US. If you are a student in US also, you can think of doing a PhD in Europe because you can see all the nice sites out there. You can think of Europe as a giant historical theme park. And if you are a student in Europe, you may also think of coming to US and doing a PhD because you may be able to see all the nice natural locations out there such as the Grand Canyon, the Niagara Falls and so on.